Welcome to Bible study. I trust you're having a good week. Uh, and again, do all the safe practices with your health and not only for yourself, but for others as we walk together uh, during these challenging times. Psalm 35 is our discussion for uh, our Bible study. Uh, Psalm 35, and it is categorized as a personal lament. Uh, and this is one of three. Uh, we did Psalm 13, Psalm 86, and now Psalm 35 uh, is a personal lament. And then next week, we'll probably be uh, moved to communal um, or community lament. Uh, lament is that's expressions of uh, honest expressions of uh, that one has as they will go through the experiences that they had not planned for and or anticipated, but now they find themselves uh, in them. I find that these lament Psalms, Psalm 35 again, as you're finding it, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard, I find that these Psalms are extremely honest and sometimes a little too honest for the good pious Christian uh, that feels that they have to say praise the Lord in all things. Not so. In these particular Psalms, they're about honest expressions of an individual or a group as they're being taken through something that they don't like, uh, something that God could have altered but did not alter. And so they approach him uh, to change, fix, or at least give them uh, the steadfastness as they go through life's experience. It's Psalm 35. Now I'm not gonna read all of it because there are 28 uh, verses. And so if you just uh, find it, I'm gonna talk a little bit and uh, then we'll go back and forth with some of the, uh, some of the wordage. This Psalm is a lament of a person uh, who is persecuted and attacked from former friends. That's some of the pain of it. Uh, these are not strangers or persons of another country or anything. These are persons that are attacking him that he's aware of, and he did not expect them to do what they are doing. Uh, his appeal, uh, his appeal is to God for reprieve. Now, remember, he, he, he's a religious person. He's in covenant, meaning in relationship to God. They have an agreement. Uh, I, I like to say he, he understands that God has got his back, but it doesn't seem like God has his back and he's wondering why. Look at, look at just the, the first part of this, um, Psalm 35. Uh, and how can I say it? He's religiously angry, but his anger is birthed out of his hope, not his despair. Uh, am I making any sense? That, that he's, he's angry, but his anger is out of his hope, not of out, of, out of his despair. And so he says words very candidly. Notice, contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and rise up to help me. Draw the spear and the javelin against my pursuers. S say to my soul, I am your salvation. No notice this didn't start off, praise the Lord. I give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, the Lord is good. No! He is in the midst of a situation and he spoke clearly about how he felt and what he was going through. This is a close, close personal lament by a person who is in covenant relationship agreement with God. Seemingly, as you look at this Psalm, there is an evil spirit or spirits that um, is, are, using persons who have collectively overwhelmed and who are overwhelming his daily life and causing his life to be miserable. Uh, the odds are against him. Uh, collectively, he's no match for this crowd, whoever they are. 
uh, and his life is overwhelmed. Please remember the speaker of this psalm, and I'll say it more than once, is a believer. This is not an agnostic, this is not a non-believer, this is not an atheist, this is not someone who doesn't believe in the Bible or believe in God. He is a firm, committed believer who finds his life at this moment and having moments when his life is miserable. Can I talk plain? And people of faith who love God will have moments when life is miserable. Um, I can't promise you, and, and I know that there are those religious believers and teachers who will say that, you know, every day can be sunny and uh, every day is Sunday. That's not true. People of faith who love the Lord, who serve him with gladness, living in this world with other human beings, in a world where there are circumstances that we have no control over, will have seasons and times when they are miserable. Are you listening? He's a believer, one. Two, he has a covenant with God. And yet there are experiences as the weaker partner in the covenant who lives on earth in circumstances around and with other persons that are overwhelming and he needs the stronger person in the covenant, God, to intercede on his behalf. Are you with me that far? This is a partnership, partners. And the partner, the divine partner, God, doesn't seem to be helping him. And consequently, he is experiencing physical, emotional, and spiritual devastating circumstances daily, day and night, week after week, month after month, and sometimes longer. He's living with this kind of misery that is devastating him daily. And, and, and in fact, uh, he's wondering where God is. Look at verse, uh, look at these verses with me. Verse one, follow along. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Notice, fight against those who fight against me. He's asking for a partnership. You see, contend, O Lord, with those. Notice verse 11. Malicious witnesses rise up. They seek, no, they ask me about things I do not know. The point is malicious witnesses. What does malicious mean? If you say somebody is malicious, what does that mean? Destructive, devastating. Um, I, I, I'm no match for them. Notice verse 19. Do not let my treacherous enemies rejoice over me. What does treacherous mean? Are you listening, looking at this? And again, this is a believer who's in partnership with God, who's dealing and grappling in this life on earth with treacherous and malicious individuals that are striving to destroy his life, his happiness, and his security. This is Bible, y'all. <laughs> this lamentation is, he launches into this prayer. This is a prayer. Uh, now, pray when you have treacherous, malicious, individuals and structures trying to destroy you. Hmm? You don't always start off, Lord, I want to thank you. You start off, Lord, I need some help. I'm hurting. I'm struggling. This unpolished verbal prayer seems to be uttered 
in thoughtful anger. He was honest. He was being real. Uh, yet, it is a genuine verbalization and a cry for help having hope. Not in himself, are you listening? In his resources, but help from his partner that he's in covenant with, who has the wherewithal to take care of him and more to relieve and rescue him. Notice there is a sense of urgency. Uh, no, no, and, and sometimes we don't have, contend, O oh Lord, urgency. If you're drowning, you're not passive when you ask for help. Help me, I'm drowning. There's a sense of urgency. And, and if I talk plain, and sometimes people of faith don't express that urgency unless they find themselves in miserable conditions. Sometimes people of faith can be so controlling and domineering and resourceful that we can live feeling that we don't really need God and we don't bother him because mm -mm. we can handle it. This adult productive believer was in a situation that with all of his resources, he needed some help. Don't ever get to the point that you're so proud self-contained, self-contained, and have such control that we don't cry out for help. There is a sense of urgency, not despair, but hope. He is convinced that these conditions, not yet, having divine intervention, cannot, will not change unless God intervenes. Cannot, will not change, cannot, will not change on their own. I don't like it but some people get worse. <laughs> some situations get worse. Are you listening? Uh, and I know you want me to hurry and say before they get better. <laughs> I know that's what you want me to hear me to say. But life brings situations for people of faith where we realize that there's some things we cannot change on our own. And if I talk plain and push this, sometimes structures, mm, sometimes organizations, mm, sometimes governments, mm, sometimes countries, mm, that we have so much sophisticated technology that we feel that we're invincible. And this virus is showing all of us how vulnerable we all are. Yes, it's having a tremendous impact on the poor, the needy, uh, persons in high density areas and in inner cities um, and candidly in, in, in cities where there is a predominance of African Americans, um, we're finding uh, alarming rates of sickness and death. Um, listen, this is not Psalm 35. This is not a pious, polite resignation of I'll be all right. <laughs> I may be, but I'm not now. 
I know there's a bright side tomorrow, but I'm living today. I know the trouble doesn't last always, but what about right now? I'll be all right. But an act of verbalization insists that God look and see and do something about my condition. And we'll see that. He calls God to look and see. Look at verse 17. How long, O Lord, will you look on me? I know you see me. Rescue me from their ravishes, my life from the lions. Lord, I'm glad you're up there and looking. Thank you, but I need you here now with this. Um, walk with me, and you may just want to uh, make a note when he talks about conditions. Uh, in these 28 verses of uh, this 35th chapter, I'm just going to mention some verses and just some phrases from the verses uh, to, to try to get through this, to talk about conditions. Uh, we start with verse 1, uh, those who contend against me. Verse 4, um, who seek after my life, um, who devise evil uh, against me. Verse seven, uh, for without cause, they hide their net for me without cause. Verse 11, malicious witnesses rise up. Verse 12, they repay me evil for good. Verse 15, ruffians whom I do not know. Verse 17, rescue me, my, my, my life from lions. Um, I, I looked at that, and, and as I looked at that, that, that 17th verse uh, and, and, and noticed it, it, it says, how long, O Lord, will you look on? That the reference is, Lord, you're not here. Are you listening? Lord, the, the assumption is, if you were here, I wouldn't be going through this. I know you're looking, but if you intervened, I wouldn't be going through this. There's a very interesting uh, parallel to this in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 11, and you may want to notice that uh, verses 17 and following is that pericable main passage uh, of Scripture where Jesus is grappling and the disciples with Mary and Martha around the death of Lazarus. Just, some of you will recall that. It's the Gospel of St. John, uh, chapter 11, uh, verses 17 and following. Please read that. I'm, I'm just going to hit on two things. Um, it, it seems like Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, the brothers and sisters, they love Jesus. They provided for Jesus uh, when he was in the area uh, to stay with them. Uh, Lazarus became sick. Lazarus died. When Jesus heard about him dying, he did not rush to the house. But after he had died, he told the disciples, hey, let's go and visit Lazarus. Uh, he's asleep. Up, oh, he's asleep, Lord. We don't have to go. He said, listen, y'all, uh, Lazarus is dead. Oh, once Jesus arrives at the house of Mary and Martha, before he gets there, Martha hears that he's coming. She gets up, runs to the Lord and says these words, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Are you listening? That's real. Lord, if you, there are those that would say, well, Lord, if you were in the midst of this, we wouldn't be going through this. There are those that will tell you that the devil is doing this. <laughs> there are those going to say that this is punishment for evil. All of that stuff is surf surfacing. Mary, when she hears that the Lord is th there, uh, she leaves the house. Then she gets to Jesus and says the same words as her sister Martha. Lord, if you had been here, 
my brother wouldn't have died. The Lord can be with you, but there is still a season for death and dying. Am I making any sense? That's why it's important, and this is not an evangelistic teaching uh, session. That's why it's important, really, to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, uh, because then you know, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord, for they shall rest. That, that, that death is not the end for people. Uh, after death, then the judgment. But when you die in the Lord, you die in hope. You live in hope. You don't live in fear. Death is not the last word. Jesus has the last word. Um, and I've got to back off of that because I'm acting preachy and I'm teaching. I don't want to preach. Uh, but stay with this text. Verse 17. How long? And sometimes the pious saints don't like to talk like this. Well, honey, don't, don't, don't talk like that. You know, the Lord, the Lord is not thin skinned. He's not overly sensitive and he can handle your language and he can handle your thoughts and your feelings. Be honest. How long, Lord? As a business person, how long, Lord? As an employee that may be underemployed or unemployed now, how long, Lord? If I have a restaurant, I've got only carry out. How long, Lord? If I am a barber, no. If I'm a person that needed a haircut, I would tap my head in, in my beard and say, how long, Lord? <laughs> it's honest. In Psalm 35, it's honest. Now, context, uh, contextualize this uh, of what he's going through. And we did that through verses 1 through 19 to verses 12 and 14 as to what he did and was doing, which just as adds fodder to the fire. Listen to what he says. He's talking to God. Um, verse 11, uh, malicious witnesses rise up against me. Uh, they ask me about things I do not know. Look at verse 12. They repay me evil for good. My soul is forlorn. Wait a minute. They repay me evil. Lord, I've been kind. And I haven't reaped kindness. Look at verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, I wore sackcloth. I was sad. I, was a, I afflicted myself with fasting. When they were sick, I would fast and I would pray for them. Who? Those who are maliciously and treacherously against me. F further, I prayed with head bowed on my bosom. Verse 14, as though I grieved for a friend or a brother. I went about as one who laments for a mother, bowed down in mourning. Talk to me, somebody. D don't rush, don't rush through that. Lord, for the very people who are malicious and treacherous, I did all that I knew to do when they were going through their rough times. Hmm? Listen to his words. I grieved as for a friend or a brother, but more than that, I, I, I mourned as if I'd lost a mother. For who? For them. And now they have turned on me and are treacherous and malicious. Have you ever helped someone <laughs> who turned on you? And you know that you did everything you could do for them when they were in a low spot. And now that they've been, quote, blessed and they're wherever they are, 
They turn on you. As my sister Cora used to say, they ig you. Uh, they, they ignore you. Notice the call for divine intervention. Verses 1 through 6. Fight against them, Lord. Take hold. Let them help me, Lord. I can't handle this emotionally, physically, or spiritually. Then notice at verses 20 through, through 27, there's a call by this psalmist to the covenant partner God to help him and to keep his side of the bargain. Lord, I don't bother you if I don't really need something. But when I really need you, I really need you. I try not to bother you with trivia and stuff that I can manage and handle. I want to do that, Lord. But I'm now in a situation that this is not trivial. It's not getting better. In fact, it's getting worse. And the only way I can find some relief and resolve now is for you to intervene in my condition that is miserable. Um, yet this 35th Psalm, as we look at this, has an element of praise to it. Uh, and the praise almost seems to be um, conditional and strategically structured. That the first hint of the praise is in verse nine that comes right after verse number eight. And verse number eight uh, talks about ruin and being ruined. Then he said, then shall my soul rejoice in the Lord. There breaks. Lord, I'm in it, but, I, but I'm going to rejoice in you. You see how he works that? Verse 9, notice the words, then, then. That means after something has occurred. Lord, when you give me a little break, then I can just say, oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. But while I'm in it, I, can't, I don't have that. Uh, I'm praying, Lord. Verse number 10 is inclusive of God's act for the poor and the needy. Lord, it's not just me, but there are others that are struggling. Verse 18, there is again that condition, then I. Seemingly the psalmist is uh, engaging God uh, to say, Lord, I, I, can, I can praise you and will, but I need you to deliver me as I work through and go through these challenges. Verse 27, as I finish, God is great. Are you listening? God is great. God is the Lord. God is worthy of our praise. Prayer is real, but be honest as we will pray. And there's a slight hint that God likes motivation. So when you find yourself really in need, talk to him honestly and seek his guidance. We thank you for this time and for the honesty and the integrity of this religious person. Help us, for you are worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name, amen.